Okay. Right, hello, hello, everyone. Anyway, while that, um, oh, look, there's Kelly Hicks. We'll admit Kelly. Oh, um, got here as well. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay. So let me just say, so I, my name is Simon Duffy. I run the Centre for Welfare Reform and um, also one of the co-founders of Citizen Network, which is a global cooperative <laughs> for equality and diversity to create a world where everybody matters. And I'm... Um, honored that pfg are doing this webinar for us um pfg is my favorite thing group whatever you are community in in, in the world um and uh, so it always makes my heart sing to be with you and um what we're doing here today is a webinar. We've organized it quite quickly, so it's great to see how many people have come. Um, it's always it's always beautiful chaos with PFG, So, but I'm expecting um, a fair mixture of both, but lots more beauty, really. Um, the session is recorded, everybody, so bear that in mind. Um, if, if there's a real big problem and you've said something you really regret, <laughs> I can I can cut the um, offending parts out. But in general, just remember this will go online uh, in, in a day or two after the session as part of the Centre for Welfare Reforms um, broadcasted webinars. And actually it will also be included in the library of resources for the European project Day Centres Without Walls. It, lovely to see Pavlos here <laughs> from, um, from, from Crete. Because, um, I mean, PFG is a fantastic example of something where you've got a centre, but you're not a traditional day centre by any means. You're really people who've created a whole community and who occupy physical and virtual space together doing amazing things. So, um, yeah, this is a great opportunity to hear some of the different voices, to document that, um, to share perspectives, to share learning, and, and I hope to inspire people around the world with what happens when people come together and just start helping each other and making great things happen. So again, I just apologies. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to largely get out of the way and focus on the technical task of muting people when they've left their microphone on by accident um, and uh, and let Karen Senior, who I have known for very many years, uh, way back when we were trying to make brokerage and person-centered planning and personal budgets work, and, and then who's been one of the fantastic collaborators with PFG over the years, and is also, I'm proud to say, a fellow of the Centre for Welfare Reform. So I'm going to hand over to Karen, who has a cunning plan for how we use our time and I'll slip into the background okay. over to you Hello. hi everyone I'm Karen um like I, Simon's given me a beautiful introduction there um don't usually get one that beautiful so thank you <laughs> so okay um uh, hi everyone thank you for joining us um what I'm going to be doing my main role today is guiding people who are talking through it we've got um a lot of people who want to talk about our group and we always think the best way to tell our story is through our members um so that's what we are with no PowerPoint, nothing like that. We are telling our story, you know, through people's stories and that's what we're doing. Um, so that's where we are, what we're going to be doing today. We hope you all have fun and um, feel free to have questions as well. Um, we've got we've got about 20 minutes at the end for questions. Um, and we're also going to have a bit of music for you as well, a bit of live music to finish um, to finish the afternoon yeah. as well, to um, send you all, um, all out on an lifted note as well so okay um first of all um we are going to do a little bit of an introduction so it's not going to be long it's going to be 15 20 minutes which will just give you a brief background to where we've what we've been doing over the last 10 years i've been with pfg for over 10 years i have a um, 
mental health, well, two mental health, three mental health, four mental health labels myself. So sometimes I'm well enough to work and sometimes I'm not well enough to work. And they are the only organisation who have ever, ever understood that and um, supported me through it and given me peer support when I've needed it, um, as well as being an employer at one point. And, and you know, but I mainly I'm a member of the group and that's what works is that we're all members first. Okay, so Kelly's coming back in. I think she might have had to go out again. If Kelly, if Kelly's got a problem with her internet, I will do this bit of the introduction. Like um, Simon explains us as um, beautiful chaos, and we are. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So is Kelly back in again? If not, I, I'll do this. But I just let her in. Okay. I saw her come in, but I can't now see her on the screen. No, I, I can't. That's what I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> if not why don't yeah. you start right i'll start this bit so the people focus group has been around more than a century it seems ancient when we say that but it has and um, we've got some of the very first members on this screen we've got chris powell you were one of the very first members weren't you and we've got our dazzler um who's our darren who said darren today really wanted to come and tell his story um he's in hospital everybody but he still wanted to come and tell his story so we, he still come today which is amazing um okay so how did we start well um a group of people came together um, and this is how I met the group who um, wanted personal health budgets in mental health. I was already doing some work in another part of the country and they were really struggling to get them. Um, it just wasn't happening. Um, nobody would listen and nothing, nothing was moving. So what they did is they decided to help each other um, through something called support buddies. And also, Simon, at that point, you got involved, didn't you? Um, and you helped them write a charter. Um, they, and they called themselves the Personalisation Forum Group at that point. So, and they wrote kind of like this charter that said about what they were and that kind of thing. Um, it became evident things weren't going to happen in the way they wanted to do with personal budgets. So they started something called Support Buddies, which was basically peer support, helping each other. Um, they were meeting on park benches, in church halls, and just it became apparent the power of people helping people, because that's simply what we think peer, peer support is. And then... A little bit later, um, I won't tell you exactly how it happened because it kind of was a windy windy way we were given the wellness centre, our beautiful little centre in intake in Doncaster. Um, it's always filled with art, um, colour, food um, and, and everything. It, it's just our home. It's not a centre, it is our home. We don't call it a centre, we call it our home and it is. So that's a bit about how, we've, how we began. And now I will hand over to Andrea Butcher, who um, is one of, is well, was a member um, and had a lot to do with us. She'll tell her story. Um, and now she, she works with us and we love her. Um, and she's um, now one of our directors as well. Um, and we've had, we've just had lovely relationship with Andrea over the years and are so pleased she's with us. So uh, Andrea and Glyn are going to talk to you about, around some other things. Okay. Okay, so I'll hand over to Andrea and Glyn now. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, I'll start. Andrea's going to come in at the end, and she's going to be the bit where about the future of PFG. If that's okay. Uh, so, I just first of all, I just want to thank everyone for being here today. It's absolutely amazing this journey we've been on. I want to talk to you about peer support, and just to say, PFG didn't only change my life; they saved my life. Peer support saved my life. Peer support did something for me that, that no services could ever do. I've been in mental health services from being 14. I am now 49. And I spent years and years in services, being stuck in a service that didn't care, that didn't help me, that didn't, that didn't help me recover or, or anything in my life. Peer support has changed my life. I now have a life before I used to exist. But PFG, uh, peer support, is about people helping people. 
peer support is about showing people that you have gifts and skills to share, that you're valued, that you are an asset, you are an asset to your community. PFG showed me what community is, and now I, I can engage with my community, and now my community can engage with me. Peer support is also about giving support as well as receiving support, and it's about all is all being one, is all being all is all being one community, and having different parts and different assets and different skills to share. And it's about that equalness. We, are, we have a very linear process where we're all members first. All we've got is different roles and different things that we do. And that's one of the greatest assets about PFG. And it's one of our grow, uh, fundamental principles is that we're all, we're all equal. And we come from a, a, a place of fairness, of love, of care, of compassion, of warmth and understanding. We come from a strengths-based model that's based on what we can do and not what we can't do. We come from a place or, or a social model of what, what you can give and be in society, not a medical model of a number or a diagnosis or an illness or a treatment. We don't come as a number. We're not a number as you are in services. We're not prescriptive. What people bring and the gifts and the warmth and the love that people give is what they give. We're not allied or tied to any services between nine and five. Peer support, we live this every day. This is not a process. This is not a service. We live it every day. So we support people at two o'clock in the morning like we would at two o'clock in the afternoon. We, we support people on a Saturday and a Sunday when normal services are closed, as we do Monday to Friday. And what each person gives and what each per person brings is unique to them. It's PFG is where the magic happens. In again, in lockdown, before lockdown, we had 1750 members on our PFG like page on Facebook. Now we have over 1950, 1960. So even through the pandemic, the pandemic through COVID, it's our our membership has grown exponentially. And the people and the, and the, the different groups that are coming on our reach travels all the way through the country. Again, the journey through statutory services. Again, can't talk about this journey at the beginning, which were a very bit fraught, and there were uh, people arguing and not disagreeing about certain ways to go. Right now, today, we have an excellent relationship with services. We're commissioned uh, by services, as in Safe Space. Safe Space is the only peer-led mental health service, mental health crisis service in England. These are the uh, peer-led crisis services run by staff, but this is purely peer-led by members of the community running a crisis service in England, and that is historic in itself. A crisis team, uh, or would you, would you also know as the access, the access team, we have terrible relationships with them. This last year, we won an award for partnership working with the, with the SPAR team, single point of access team, crisis team. Again, that's how we change. That's how our relationships change. We, I also chair the Mentally Well Alliance in the community for with in partnership with R Dash and the CCG. Again, that's where we've come in. We, we also work on a strategic level, as well as on the ground, with the boots on the ground, delivering services to people day in day out. We've got a creative writing group on a Monday and a Friday. What? a therapeutic creative writing group that allows people to talk about the trauma-based uh, situations that have been in their life. It brings healing and recovery to people. We have our seven o'clock social Zoom meeting on, a, on an evening. This was created through the pandemic because people couldn't meet face to face. But we've now got 80 people, 90 people who've never been trained in Zoom or been on a Zoom meeting, now knowing how to use Zoom. We have people now using Teams Working with t working with different organisations, going on teams meetings, sharing their experiences, sharing their gifts, and again, it's just a marvelous, marvelous place to be. Uh, being part of PFG, being part of this of this journey that PFG is. So our culture, our culture, and our values. We are all equal. Everybody's got something to give. Nobody's written off. Everybody's brought in from the centre, back from the edge. Whatever we can do support to support people, we'll do that. 
And also, peer support is about giving and receiving support. So as much as I give, as much as I do with my time, there's, there's times when I'm delusional, I hear voices, I'm suicidal, I, I have breakdowns where I need people like yourself, Simon, and, and, and Karen and Kelly and Tammy and Andrea, but I need support. So that's the greatest thing. We're a community, we're a family. And some people within our group, I've never had families. So we are their family because we support them. They support us on a daily basis based on trust, based on equality, based on fairness, based on transparency. We don't have one meeting for them and one meeting for you or one meeting for professionals and one meeting for them. We have a meeting together. We work on things together. We have co-production together. We work from the beginning and work up, not from the top down. We won't work from the top down. We work, everybody's in it together. or we not in it at all? That's the way our organisation works. Because no matter what job role you've got and what gifts and skills you've got, we're all equals. And that's what to remember. Everyone is equal. And everyone is treated as human first. Everyone is human within our group. In services, you're not seen as human. You see them as a number. But I in peer support, we're all that, human. That's an amazing place to finish, Glyn. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, I can go on forever. Apologize. <laughs> he loves me, really. <laughs> I do love you. You know I do. <laughs> so I, I, I will have that, Simon. I that. know exactly when <laughs> when to come in. I've known him a lot of years. Okay, Andrea, we have running a little bit behind but I know we'll catch up so it's fine Andrea <laughs> it's your turn you. I'll, I'll give you a little bit of time now <laughs> I found the Excellent perfect James time skill to Karen. That's, that's... <laughs> um, hi everyone my name's Andrea Butcher as, as uh, Karen's already introduced me um, I landed my dream job with PFG last year when I was invited to to become a, a member and one of the directors um, a little bit of my past is um, my relationship with PFG has been um, a crazy journey, I guess, if I can use that word, um, as a commissioner. So I, I was a commissioner with the CCG in Doncaster, and my role was to buy mental health services in Doncaster. Um, and started working with PFG, and they absolutely blew me away in terms of the can do attitude. Um, getting things done, weren't tied up with bureaucracy um, as, as much as statutory services were, but had a real passion for people. And you could see that in the um, journeys that people were taking with PFG and they were going from strength to strength in, and, and the, there wasn't anything around, it, it wasn't any one thing. So we weren't just buying one service or, or one pathway from PFG when we did buy services. A lot of the time we relied them on them as a partner. So um, that was sort of my experience. So standing from a commissioner perspective, there have just been some fantastic work. And then coming to this side of the fence, um, working with PFG, I guess, it's, it's been a completely different experience and I've had to learn what it's like to be a provider, but also a provider of peer support. Um, and it frightened me to death, I must admit, because we didn't have what I perceived to be the very rigid structures that I was used to working with. Um, and it's exciting and it's funny and it's great and it's sad and it's heartbreaking and all those things because we're dealing with real people at, at real time. Um, and that's the beauty of it. It's peer support is very responsive, as as Glenn said. It's very loving. It's very inclusive. Um, and the pandemic has shone a light on how important relationships are. And PFG are at the epitome of that. Particularly now, we can see that statutory services are struggling under the weight of burden of of people being ill in crises. But because of the pandemic, there isn't a pathway available for people to continue with their recovery once they've got through that crisis. Well, PFG provide that and I've always provided that and I've continued to do so through very difficult circumstances. And they've done that through innovation. They've done that through creative ideas. They've done that through flexibility. They've done that through um, just being friends um, to one another and having that relationship. So I'm very, very proud to be part of this of this group. Where we're we going next? So, so Glyn sort of mentioned um, that you know 
obviously PFG in its very, very early inception was a peer support group that people just use their time and resources and, and, and share that amongst one, one another. As it's grown in pace, um, and has got more focus and built more relationships in the community. What we found is that we're now in a position where we can offer our services out in in a way that we can attract funding, which means we can do more, which is which, which is brilliant. What it also means is that we need plans and we need strategic um, discussions. Um, 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 the way that we do that is we talk to our members and ask what type of services we think we can provide going forward and what we think our offer is. And we've got to offer, offer value for money. We've got to offer good outcomes. Um, and there's been lots of work over the pandemic through Zoom calls and discussions, um, finding out some of those ideas and thoughts um, and working with Ardash around their transformation programme, which is really, really exciting because Ardash now want to change and develop their services in a, in a different way. Um, and, it, and it comes from service users and people with lived experience to inform that. So that's really exciting. The CCG have also got a transformation programme. So they're looking at community services and Ardash are looking at inpatient. So what kind of community-based services do you want to see? Do you want to see a more clinical medical model or do you want to see something that is more akin to peer support? And I think, you know, hands up, everybody wants more peer support because it's more authentic and people understand people have already gone through that service. So that's some of the areas that we're working on currently. In the future, we're looking to do even more of that. So it might be working with people who are inpatients currently or due for discharge and making those um, relationships and connections with them. So people have got a very smooth discharge into a community where they know they've got that help and support going forward. Glyn mentioned safe space. So safe space looks like it's here to stay, which is fantastic. It's got really, really good outcomes. It's extremely busy and people who are contacting safe space um, are people who wouldn't necessarily think that they needed a, a, a service such as ours, but here we go, here we are. Um, and hopefully when the wellness centres open, they will have con continuity of support going forward once that crisis is over. So I think the future is looking bright for PFG. I think um, we'll be working a lot closely with our, our partners, local authority, council, um, CCG, even GP practices. GP practices are now finding that they need support with people who have got long-term conditions and the RAP model is absolutely suited to that. So we're going to need people to train upon RAP. So I think there's lots and lots and lots of opportunity for PFG. And although it's been around for 10 years, I think it's definitely going to be around here for another 10 to 20 years. So uh, that's that's the, um, the good news for us. So I'm definitely here to stay. Thank you. Andrea, you were minute perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Amanda, um, Amanda Pratt. Where's our Amanda? Amanda, you're yeah. next. Okay. Um, before I joined PFG, I was socially isolated, uh, unable to work because of my mental health and living alone meant that I struggled to find a focus and the lack of engagement with people impacted greatly on my mental health. I had friends, but due to their work, family and life commitments, I did not see them regularly. PFG opened up a whole new world for me. I've never experienced anywhere like PFG. To be seen as Amanda and not as a person with labels makes me feel valued. I've made new friends, taken part in a whole range of activities, such as creative writing, which has increased my self-confidence. Pre-COVID, I've had the opportunity to attend meetings and share my experiences of NHS mental health services with professionals in the hope it went some way to implementing change. To feel included and welcomed into the PFG family is a powerful thing. I'm not judged and I can truly be myself with new friends I trust. Without PFG, my experience of the pandemic would be much worse. To put simply, it has and continues to be a lifeline for me, especially the nightly Zoom meetings and the peer support and friendship, which continues outside of that. 
acceptance is very powerful and to be accepted in the unique environment of PFG makes me feel like I matter in this world, that I have lots to give and I'm always learning from other PFG members. My contributions in whatever shape or form are valid and taken seriously. I feel like being part of PFG is like being on a wonderful journey where there is hope, friendship, support and inclusion. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amanda also facilitated a Christmas Day lunch on Zoom for us in um, on Zoom um, on actual Christmas Day for all those who, who, who didn't have anyone to spend Christmas Day dinner with, didn't you? And it was lovely. I know the people who yes. came, it was really appreciated. So, yeah. yeah, so that's the things we can do out of time, even during a pandemic. We still we still had a Christmas dinner <laughs> going at some point or another. Amanda, thank you so much. Um, you always write beautifully and say beautiful things so thank you okay the next person um to tell their story is chris powell um chris powell has been part of the organization like i say right from the beginning so here's chris now hi um i suffer from schizophrenia and i had a long stay in hospital about 25 years ago and uh i'd struggled going to community centers um, the atmosphere wasn't right, you know, and, uh, but the first time I attended one of the first PFG meetings, I just liked the energy. Um, I attended whenever I could after that. Um, so soon they had the wellness centre and people, people just chatting, having a coffee in a relaxed atmosphere. And, but the thing is you get continued support with peer support. That's where peer support works. It might take a bit of time to open up to somebody and sometimes it's not the right time. But once you do, you can access support every time you see those people. You don't have to wait a month for an hour's chat with a, a nurse or something. In fact, only today I was fobbed off a little bit with my CPN. But um, I've got another five minute phone call in a, in a couple of weeks time. So that's all right. Um, so you just sit around, you can just sit, have a coffee and someone will ask you how it's going and you might confide in a problem and then they'll offer you some real advice from life experience. And it means all the more when that happens. You also have opportunities in a place like the PFG. So I've done RAP training, I've become a RAP facilitator, I've learned counselling techniques off a highly qualified therapist, and I've attended seminars to professionals about my mental health. Um, the real eye-opening moment for me, though, was when, um, after our meetings, we had two minutes each to talk about how our week had gone. And I was saying that I was disappointed how the mental health, the disability football team that I played for, it had lost its funding and it seemed just didn't seem to be happening. And Kelly just said as if it was the simplest thing in the world, uh, why don't you just start your own team? So that just opened up a possibility to me. I didn't have to rely on someone else to run it for me and just attend. I could actually make this happen. So I'm now a qualified football coach and our disability team just got promoted to the championship division of the uh, South Yorkshire Ability Council League. Um, so what I wanted to talk about was how the trust that I had for Kelly, because I knew her and she knew me, and the response, she gave me the responsibility and uh, that's meant such a lot to me in, in my life. It means that I can actually achieve things and I have done. So I'm not just a number, I'm a human being. I've got thoughts, feelings, dreams. I don't revolve my life around taking medication and five minute phone calls. 
Um, I'm, I'm now where I never thought I would be. I'm doing something that means something to me and to the players that I'm helping. And peer support did that for me. It helped me build my confidence, share my feelings and build strategies. I'm more than just coping though. I'm living. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. That was brilliant. Thank you. Thank you ever so much. Okay. Um, B is up next with her story. So um, B's, B will tell you her story when she comes on. Are you on, B? Are you, are you here? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. You. I'm here. Fuck it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> right. I'll put my timer on so I know where I am. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Uh, Simon, sorry if anything comes out bad. You might have to do some editing, you might not. I don't know how, uh, how that'll work out. <laughs> if you haven't guessed, I, I have Tourette's syndrome. Um, I'm transgender. Uh, I have Tourette's syndrome, as I said, and I also have ADHD, all fully diagnosed. Um, not that a diagnosis means much these days because it's a label doesn't define you. It's, it's, it's how society treats you and how the people around you treat you that's that's how what makes life work um i'm quite new 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 to pfg compared to a lot of people um i have a quite a tough time in society with acceptance obviously with with with, with, with dealing with tourette's it's not only exhausting but people take it the wrong way there's a lot of stigma behind tourette's um it's just known for swearing. It's not actually known for the motor tics or the real problems it causes because swearing's the least of your worries when you're having neck, neck spasms, um, when you're you know, getting scars from kitchen knives, when you're cooking because you have a spasm, all of a sudden it has its health and safety hazards that come with it. Um, being at PFG is not only a workplace to me, it's, it's provided me security, um, it's provided me a career which, which is different to any career I've ever had. It, it provides me with, I'd say job satisfaction, but it doesn't almost feel like work. So I feel like it's the wrong word to use. Um, I feel like we're all different in our own way. And you go into society and people define the stereotype of what's normal and what isn't. Well, at PFG, there is no normal. There is no different. We're all human. Um, coming to PFG, I know it's quite new to PFG in the respect of having somebody trans and with Tourette's. Um, the focus has mainly been about mental health, maybe not as much focus around neurological development disorders because it's mental health that normally needs more attention and uh, mental health has uh, more well, problems is the wrong word, but people need to reach out more. Um, but that's not to say we don't have our difficulties because a neurological development disorder is a difference in the brain that is there from the word go. And we are different in ourselves. Some people learn to cope with it better than others. And society treats us differently wherever you go. So I'm proud to bring that to PFG. I'm proud to be starting the first um, LGBT and transgender support for everybody within PFG. I'm proud eventually to start Tourette's support. Um, that's in discussion. We're going to do it. We are going to do it. I'm not quite ready to start it in myself because it takes a lot to, with Tourette's, we trigger each other. So if someone else ticks, I tick and yeah, put a group of us together and we'll end up breakdancing uncontrollably, you know. <laughs> uh, our ticks talk instead. So it, it's going to take me a lot to get round to get to that stage where I can suppress and control myself enough to support others without having uncontrollable ticks. But as soon as I'm in that place, I'm going to start helping others with Tourette's and we're going to start something incredible. But the bottom line of it is, yes, it's my work, but it feels like more like a community. It feels like... Um, <laughs> a safe place for me. I come to the word work, but I come to PFG, whether it's on Zoom or in the center. And 
it, it's like walking out from a world that isn't necessarily safe into a safe place. For me, the only place I was safe before was Pride, which is once a year, because instead of being a minority, I'm the majority at Pride. At PFG, that goes out the window because we're all we're all individuals, but we're all one. We're all human, no matter what your difference is. And I think that's a pretty incredible thing. And I'm pretty damn proud to say I'm part of PFG and I wouldn't change it for the world. And I wish the world could see what we do more often. Um, I'm going to stop now because I've got 28 seconds left and Karen, I know you'll be happy I've finished on time. <laughs> thank you. So, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Wonderful. And thank you ever so much for that, B. Wonderful. <laughs> Okay, um, so next we have our G, our Graham. Where's G? I'm here. He's here, right? And Graham, and um, he was. It was through the PFG members that he became known as G, wasn't it? Many, many yeah. years ago. Graham's been with us many years, so um, this is Graham, lovingly known as G. I can't remember how many years, but yeah. <laughs> so, what does the PFG mean to me? It simply means. For it simple, people helping people. That's it, in a nutshell. That's it, done. But that then increases everything. Can People helping people then includes getting to know people, getting to know new people. And as somebody who has been diagnosed, formally diagnosed as Asperger's, that's difficult. Extremely difficult. People with Asperger's don't do that. So the myth says. But I was accepted 100% without fail. Every way I was accepted. And all right, in the in the early days, I was I was still accepted. And I've grown as a person ever since. I've learned so much through thanks to Karen, Glenn, Kelly, Simon Duffy, even. Many others have many others on here as well, just showing me that yeah, I can be me, can be, I can be me with me faults. That's important. That is very important to me. I do overthink, and sometimes you'll see me like this, and you think, oh, he's fine, he's he's really really going well, and everything's, but you don't know the inside after, and you don't know what goes up. With in here, this bit. And, but again, and then the opportunities I've had. Wow, where do I start? Well, obviously I can't go on too long here, uh, but I'll, uh, obviously, but I'll mention two recent ones, the Lego group. As you can see, I'm actually wearing a Lego t-shirt. I didn't mean to pull it on, it's just one I, I, I had ready. But the Lego group started, I, I have a really, fascination and I love Lego and I build Lego and it also actually is a very 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 good therapeutic tool for me as well as well as my model building it takes me away from the stresses of the world it takes me away from that and gets to me in inverted commas I'll use it loosely <laughs> happy again and then a little bit later the uh I also started uh, leading a, a cycling pod through Kelly. I was part of the uh, cycling group and, and Kelly asked me to lead the cycling pod. Again, that was brilliant. So much confidence. I will finish on one thing because it is very, very part of this bit because Karen mentioned it. But, uh, and it may be slightly negative, Simon, I'm sorry, but it's what it is. About two, three, about four years ago, I applied and it goes to what we initially were about, personal budgets. I applied for a personal budget and people, and I fought two and a half years in the system for that. And people just would not, at first, give me that personal budget. They said, I don't apply for it. I, I don't have enough enough criteria. I don't have this. I don't have that. Use excuses like, oh, you've got help from the PFG. You've got help from my Barry. At the end of the day, I'm a person who needs help. 
That's what that's what the PFG gave. I gave in that fight at one time. I think Garen and Glyn knows. I gave in with that fight. They didn't. They didn't give in. Kelly didn't give in. What, they what, fought. They, what they, they fought for me. They carried on fighting for me mm -hmm. in the background. They kept fighting and saying, no, this is not right. He needs that personal budget. He, he needs it. And then I got my... Then I did get the personal budget in the end. I won. I won that battle. I got Megan, my support worker, and George, my support worker. And again, through that, I've grown even further as a person. Right. The PFG, Thanks. the PFG is, and I'll finish on this. Is what is? I know you love it, Sam, and I told you why. For me, it's the best ever, ever support group in the world. That's and thank you, G. Um, we we're fine with time. I'm going to just mention one thing here uh, again with Graham about staff boundaries, and I think it's really important that I say this. Sort of, if you're employed, you remember as well. Graham and me are great friends, and I'm honoured to say that we have been great friends from the beginning. When I I'm I'm having one of my bipolar episodes, I can get quite um, agitated when I'm going into one. Um, and let's say I don't take people's saying anything about it <laughs> very well. Um, and uh, but Graham notices it, and when other people won't say anything, um, Graham will because he he has got that directness about his, his Asperger's um, and that's okay in our group you can challenge one of the members of staff and say or you know someone who's paid or whatever and say but that's actually him supporting me that's okay you know and in other environments that wouldn't be okay so that's another way that we kind of like slip between each other as well which it's not an that's not an ordinary thing okay so that's that's just a quick one because I think that's a big difference as well in the way that we work. Okay, is Akila still on, or is her, she's just said her interview? I am. Yeah, can oh, you hear me? You're next, Akila. Okay, yes. so I, I apologise if, if I go off because uh, I'm not at home, so uh, my internet's a little bit dodgy. So uh, my name's Akila Mohammed, and I am I'm working with PFG at the current moment to engage communities. So um, just a little bit about myself. I'm a Pakistani Muslim woman and I'm um, a quote I want to start with. Um, it's hard having depression, but it's even harder being a Muslim with the depression. And that was something somebody said to me the other day and it was, it really hit me and I just thought, wow, PFG are giving me that opportunity to help people in my community have a voice and that's so important because um, with our BME communities and especially um, I'll speak from the Muslim Pakistani community um, we, we don't we you know they're not accessing services because we don't talk about things and I'm going to be really honest you know we don't talk about abuse we don't talk about depression we don't talk about mental health suicide all these things uh, are happening in our communities and they're around but we we're not discussing it because we we try and hide it and um, we have a very strong culture of um our communities helping each other you know our families helping each other but and in our, and our religion but it's not enough and it's it's um it's something that's so important to me now and i think you know this is just given um this has been highlighted by, you know, so what we, what I did is um, I copied BFG's role model of, of what they're doing, the Zoom meetings. So I was sort of said, I said to um, the team, you know, uh, are my, the Pakistani women won't join in yet. We need to give them the confidence. We need to really um, start right from the beginning. So, you know, they won't come onto your Zoom meeting. So we started our own and it started with two of us and three. Today we had seven. There were seven of us on this meeting and I was like, yay. And, and it's, and you know, the things that they were saying, and I just said to them, you know, what, what, what's, what are you getting from this group? And, and it's, and I've learned it all from your groups, you know, the PFG group, the peer support, and, and one of them said, peer support, or supporting each other, and I was like, yes. Um, and then, you know, the other one said connections, one said um, just meeting others, and, and knowing that we have things in common. And one of the younger ladies said, you know, 
I feel like you're giving me a voice. I feel like that I don't need to be scared of what people say. Now I can talk. Now I can say things. And, and she, you know, she's been through abuse. She's been to domestic violence. And she's like, I'm not scared anymore. And that was so important to me. And I was like, yes, this is, this is what we've got to do. We, you know, we're empowering each other. Um, and all of them were just like so, so like powerful in what they were saying. They were telling their own stories. And each week we're getting more. So that this kind of telling other people, um, they're helping each other, you know, and this is all from PFG, you know, but hopefully well, my dream and my vision is that they could start coming on these groups. We have got one or two who have got a little bit of confidence and have started coming on, on the on the Zooms and that's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, and I think hopefully then um, we will, you know, we will come together and I think the real, real, my passion is that, you know, we do come together, you know, we've got so much more in common than we have different and we need to make that happen. And, and I think hopefully this, this will, 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 will happen and, um, you know, we'll support each other and we're, we're hopefully going to start breaking down those stereotypes. We'll start hopefully now, you know, talking about things and I think that's really important and we're giving them that chance um, to have these discussions that are taboo in our community and we're gonna we're gonna do it so thank you to PFG and you know it's gonna be great. Thank you to you Akela. The, the lady you came on, on on one of our Zoom meetings was so powerful she, she knocked everybody out with her story um, yeah we, we, we loved her she, she, she just yeah. she came on and, and it was just wonderful so yeah so thank you and thank you thank you for you you've been a friend of the group for a long time it's lovely to have you with us as well so yeah it's lovely thank you Akila. okay next is Andrea Andrea Gann Andrea are you still with us are you, are you still here Andrea hello Andrea hello hello Andrea's been a member of the group a long time too and yes yeah, so and she comes on the zooms a lot <laughs> oh yeah you come on a lot to see us so yeah yeah Right, I first found out about PFG and it was through another member at another um, mental health place I used to go to. And I put it off for so long because I was always upset. I have BPD and it's emotionally unstabilities and I still struggle with it and it's, it's not pretty and it's not nice to live with. And I had a problem with confidence in doing stuff and I didn't have the confidence to even go to PFG. The only reason that I went to PFG is a lot of people know Nigel, he's a lovely lad, and he kept bugging me to go. So in the end, I give it. <laughs> and he said, I'll come with you. So because he said that he'd come with me and I'd known him for a year or two anyway, I actually went. And it was like a big shock when I went in because I hardly ever went out and I wouldn't do stuff on my own. So when I went in, I was met with loads of smiles with everybody. It was like the whole, everybody looked at me and I felt a bit on the spot and everyone would say, hello, 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 who are you? Let's put the kettle on. That was the, the first word that got said, let's put the kettle on. And then I managed to sit down and I was nervous, really, really nervous and shaking like a leaf. I couldn't say anything. But I went back and I kept going back and then people started saying hello and stuff. And then one person became two persons and then two persons became three. And then I started speaking to everybody in the end. And everybody was so lovely because I'd not experienced that. I've, I've been bullied all my life at school when I went to college, when I had a job that I got bullied and I've never experienced this at PFG ever. It's just physically not happened. When I have been upset and I've been at PFG, the members, not just the staff, the members have actually asked me if I'm okay. And they, ask what's wrong and if I want to talk about it to give me the option and that means a lot because it didn't 
just become a service to me, which is what I thought it was. It was actually a group of people that care about each other and love each other. They're all friends and it's just, it's the best amount of support that I've ever had. And just recently with the pandemic, I've lived on my own and I've been really isolated. And I've ended up with the confidence to be using Zoom and to interact with people, but there's also new people, which I didn't find difficult at all. And now I'm on a Zoom meeting with probably 30 odd people in it. And it's okay because I know that my PFG friends are rooting for me and they're all looking at me and it's, it's you know, and I feel, I feel cared for, which has been good. They also have a food bank service because I had to self isolate and living on my own, I couldn't go out. And what was amazing that somebody actually put a food parcel together and brought it to my house. They didn't have to do that. I didn't have to ask for it. It was suggested because I was struggling and I mentioned it to one of the members and then it ended up working its way around. And eventually they gave me the help with that. And I got an amazing food parcel, which got me through the whole not being able to go shopping thing, which was great. But that's just one of the good things about PFG. Um, I never used to eat properly either. And because PFG, the members make food at dinner time every day, it encouraged me to go to the center even more. So it, then because I was eating well, I ended up eating well at home as well because I got used to it and it gave me a routine. So when I were at home on the Saturday, the routine that I had then became normal to me. And I got the PFT to thank for that. And that, that is like the, one of the best things that they've ever done for me. And they also gave me the confidence to go to college and actually do something with my life instead of just being at home, a spare part, not going out, being depressed, feeling lonely, feeling suicidal, and I no longer have that. So thank you, PFG. I'm really thank grateful. Thank you, Andrea. We love you as well. So thank you. Um, Andrea's got a boat as well. Um, and when we're out of all this pandemic thing, we're all going to go help her do this canal boat up as well. It's going to be the PFG boat, isn't it, Andrea? We're all going to help her do that. OK, it's Laura Cox next. Um, a bit of change of plan with that one. But where's our Laura? Laura stepped in right at the last minute. So. Hiya. Hiya, you're here. Hello, yeah. Laura. So, Laura will have us all laughing because that's Laura, one of Laura's biggest gifts is she always cheers us all up. <laughs> so, um, what would you like to say about PFG? Um, obviously, I'm a new member. I've been coming through the pandemic. Um, obviously, I've got depression, um, anxiety, physical um, disabilities. Um, obviously, I've made loads of new friends. Um, Thanks to Glyn, um, obviously Karen and loads of other people. Um, obviously, I, jo I join Zoom every evening. So that's really good because obviously I feel really low after a certain time. So that's good. Um, Mondays and Fridays, I've joined the creative writing. I always say I'm never good at this. I'm never good at that. But obviously now I've got more confidence and I do it. And I'd like to thank everybody for, obviously, letting me join them. And we want to thank you, Laura, because, like I say, you've only joined us through pandemic, haven't you? But especially our creative writing, you've only been going a little while and it's fabulous, absolutely fabulous. And you always cheer us up on the seven o'clock Zooms. You, you, are, you, you are one of the people who really does cheer us up. So thank you for that as well. OK, the next person, and thank you for stepping in, because I think you stepped in about half an hour before, didn't you? I messaged you about half and half about about half half an hour before right then tammy's next our uh, tammy is tammy tammy still around yeah i'm here Here's hi it. everyone yeah i just wanted to talk about how i was introduced to pfg to begin with um because as i was growing up i always knew i were a little bit more sensitive i always knew that um I didn't quite match up to everyone else's expectations and that made me feel terrible. I got on with my life, 
you know, went to uni, still realised that I still weren't this strong person that I thought everybody else was. Um, I got my perfect job, so I thought, working... Um, I was supporting, to begin with, schizophrenics um, in their own home that had been transferred from hospital, and we were trying to keep them out of hospital and keep them living in the community. And whilst I was in this job... Um, I, I broke down myself, to be honest. I had a major breakdown. I was an area manager, so I literally had to be focused in my work. And it just took over. Um, I realised that the job was just, rather than it being a dream job, it was... It, it, it opened up a can of worms, basically. People weren't getting trapped how I thought they should be tra training as a social worker. It just crippled me. Um, and it did make me have my final, I lost the final screw out of my head. And um, I had heard of PFG at the time because I researched it. I researched for support groups to help um, my staff to be able to take out the, you know, these sufferers and um, try and get them a bit of support within the community. Um, so as soon as I had my break, my last breakdown, I've been breaking down all my life, to be honest. Um, and I kept slipping through the net, I attempted suicide numerous times. And I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I've got to get support myself. So I phoned Kelly one day after speaking with Glenn, because I'd seen all this PFG. I'm like, what is this about? But it it would at the time it were bumping space in Denner Bay. So it was quite local and I were a bit ashamed of what had happened to my um in my situation, my life. So um I phoned Kelly and I, I was in a mess. And the first thing that struck me was. Um, I just couldn't believe it because Kelly straight away said, is it OK if I come and see you? And it, it makes me so emotional today because that was the start of my recovery, which was two and a half years ago. Um, and I'm just getting to the point now where I'm feeling strong enough to be able to even think about going back to work. Um and that's all through PFG. She got me straight in that night. Um, she come. She she sent. So she came and seen me the very same day, which the crisis team had fobbed me off for years and years. There were nothing wrong with me. Um, I just suffered. I just suffered with depression and anxiety. As if that's not bad enough. Um, I went to Safe Space while it was on the pilot uh, scheme and. I never looked back. She got me a taxi that night. It was pitch black. I was terrified of my own shadow, but she did that for me. And um, I went, she she got someone to speak to me who was from the mental health team. Um, it was Paula actually now, I think back. And um, from that day, I got, um, I got to see a psychiatrist. I got my diagnosis, which is personality disorder. Um, but borderline. Um, I've also got mixed anxiety disorder. Uh, social anxiety comes in with that really bad. Um, and I never realised that because I was working. I thought, how can I suffer with that? I work. But what I didn't realise is when I went to PFG, I took off that mask. Uh, it's what I'd been hiding behind all my life and and they allowed me to do that so she after seeing the psychiatrist i decided then to go to pfg and it's been a tough road for me to go and sit with people but it's been amazing they've they've given me so much in terms of my life back really i'm able to sit here now and speak um speak to yourselves about my um condition which nobody wants to know other than at pfg um a i've been able to um also volunteer for safe space which is just fantastic because that's what i like to do i know that i'm not always well enough to go to work 
Um, but I know that PFG, if I do go back to work for three, four months, three, four years, whatever, and I do have that breakdown again, PFG will still be there for just in case. Whereas I don't believe that um, the medics are because if you get well, it's I'm scared that I'm going to get too well and they're going to say, OK, we don't want out to do with you anymore. And and then that's like just I've got nothing other than PFG. OK, thank you ever so much, Tammy. Thank you. Wonderful. OK, right. I've got two more people who want to speak and then we can go to questions. OK, uh, Darren, first of all. Dazzler, are you still with us? Darren? Yeah, I'm still with you. Okay, how, I, are, you, how I, are you doing? I, um, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a bit better. Okay, and, you've got uh, a few minutes. Okay, remember. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've been, I'm one of the founders of PFG, and I've been PFG from day one. And um, we, when we first um, started, it was from a church hall and that. Then... Um, it's funny how we 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 got the place and it the uh, it it the centre and that and um when we got the place it the centre it's not a centre like you pointed out it's our family place and our family home and with the help of Simon we made that happen because without with Simon. We we put PFG on 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 the map because we we um Simon helped us to do the PF leg page what actually launched us into the um, future and when we when we went on the leg page we just um, exploded and we. Uh, we had members coming out from everywhere, but um, the PFG to me is a great thing, and it helped us all through my years. And it's 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 about um, supporting people, and it's not just about supporting people; it's about having an extended family, and that's what PFG means to me. Ever so much, Darren. Thank you. Um, so um, we hope to see you soon, and, and you know you're welcome on Zoom tonight. Come and yes. come and Robert's singing, so you can have a bit of light and laughter from your yeah. um, from your from your hotel. From oh, I'm going to say hotel. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not an hotel, is it? <laughs> no, okay. uh, definitely not. Okay then. Right, the last person who's speaking is Grace. Um, Grace just said she wants to say a few things. And then we'll go on to questions, and then our Chris Powell's got a song to end for us. So you've got a few minutes, Grace, if that's all right. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Um, I'm Grace, and uh, I'm, I've, I've been introduced to PFG through my mum after the passing of my cousin, uh, Lewis, who was also uh, a member of PFG. And um, I'm only 17, but I've, uh, I've been part of the mental health team since I was uh, around 11 years old. And um, I have a number of uh, mental health labels, but those mental health labels don't define who I am. I am me, I'm Grace, and I'm not at my mental health condition. And like the one common thing that I've heard is that we're not a number and um, every like I think that PFG like defines this as well and uh, like it gives everyone a chance to express who they are and that and um, I'm not and like something that I tell myself is that I might not get better but every day that I'm fighting and every day I'm one step closer and I'm one day closer to becoming better and uh, I think the support that PFG uh, gives is really amazing and uh, counselling with Pete as well is uh, I've just begun that and I think it's really amazing and it's really helping. Um, I'm also, I've also been diagnosed myself with uh, Tourette's and I can understand how a lot of people feel uh, with that diagnosis and uh, I can agree that it is very tiring 
because uh, I was I've been bullied a lot in school, uh, but I've uh, I've managed to uh, finish school with some good grades. I'm I'm on to college now, and I'm uh, working on trying to work on uh, working with young children. And uh, I think that PFG is amazing, and the support you give like it just defines how special everyone really is. Thank you ever so much, Grace. You're always so eloquent when you speak. So thank you ever so much for that. Thank you. Um, okay, so we're open for questions now. Um, and we've got, we've done quite well. All, everybody else, thank you very much. We've got until um, 25 past for questions. And then Chris is going uh, gonna to sing us a song. So at 25 past, I will, um, I, I will sing. Simon, how do you want people to ask questions? Do you want them to just... Yeah, yeah well, we can do... If It'd be great if you put questions in the chat, but, I mean, there's not so many of us we can't cope with a bit of chaos. What would it be like without a bit of chaos? So if somebody wants to wave or even unmute themselves and ask a question, we can cope with that. Okay, so, there we go. Yeah. But a big thank you just to say that what an amazing, this is the best managed webinar <laughs> and I've had to do the least amount of work <laughs> of all the ones we've done. So thank you, Karen, and thank you to the group. But yeah, and, any, but anybody. What I, want, what I want you to know is that you, you can, you're asking the group. You're not just asking me and Andrea and whatever. So the group, please feel free. Anybody from the group will, will chip in and we'll give you answers as well. Because as you if you want if you haven't picked up, we're all we're all a one together. So everybody will pick up and, and speak. So all of everyone will speak. Okay. All right, thank you. So anyone want to go? Off we go. Because I've never heard of you before. And I, 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 it sounds like you're Doncaster way, or is that are you sort of across the country? Doncaster, we're based at 45 Montrose Avenue at Intake, uh, but we are looking at we have got a massive reach at, as in uh, talking to different groups in different areas, but we are looking to expand anyway. So, and and the interesting thing is that our group, although it's based geographically in Doncaster, we do a lot of work on social media. Our social media reach is massive. I mean, massive. our Zoom calls can have people from Germany on them, do, do you know, um, who've come in for support. Oh, so social media and telephone calls, we are up and down the country and that kind of thing. But, I, I you know, our geographical presence is in Doncaster. Although we have done um, projects that we call bumping spaces. Um, they're not live at the moment, but they're when we do like little bits of going out into communities and doing work. Um, we do a little bit of, of work and, and community stuff. And then we usually pull back a bit and leave them to it. So that's what we've done as well we've done something called bumping spaces and we're hoping to do some more after of them after the pandemic as well well it's been absolutely fantastic listening to all the stories and really great speakers and how they've articulated themselves i've got a real passion for peer support um it was a social prescription art class that saved my life but it was the peers on that what helped I've just done a master's on living with lived experience because people ask for lived experience, but then when you actually start working, they don't know how to deal with that lived experience. That's right. So it's That's getting people right. to accept lived experience for what it is. Um, and I'm thinking of possibly doing a doctorate in uh, peer support workers and how the impact, certainly on mental health, I've got a lot of labels as well, but how that impacts um, people, the peer aspect, as opposed to just the clinical, there's lots of clinical things out there, but people get fed up with clinical. People want friends, people want friendship. People don't want that, them and us. They want to move away from that. And this sounds just like you've done that on a really grand scale and it sounds absolutely perfect. So well done to every single one of you. And I'm really glad I've, I've for, I don't know how I found you, but I'm really glad I found you and I'm uh, connected with you in some way. So thank you. Debbie, thank you. I just want to welcome you to PFG. I want to welcome you as a member. 
you're now part of family. We're not letting you go. So whenever you go and you do your doctorate and whenever you come back, like everyone else, we're here for you. And what we'd like to do is, is to listen to you and, sh and listen to your story because you're part of our journey as well as us part of your. So it's an invitation any time that we're here to listen to you and welcome to the family. Thank you very much. That's really kind of you. Yeah, I've got quite a story. <laughs> we will listen anytime. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. And and the um and the citizen network is is working with PFG. I think the time is getting to the point where we can start to spread our wings a bit further globally. We were talking to people in Australia about the peer of support recently, and I think it's time to step start getting a bit better organized to grow this movement really so um yeah so we we will yeah reach out to us debs and um i'm sure we can find ways to support you and also to help share your story uh so yeah get in touch please so how, how do i connect them because i know i got the invite through through eventbrite but i didn't have any links and i was panicking at um two o'clock trying to find the link to join in here and no contact details for anybody to say hang on I can't I, I, I don't know how to get in right the best way to contact us and I've just put it I've put it on um, on the in the chat box is we're crackers about Facebook we everything we do and it's the PFG like page it's called um, on Facebook um, and um, we, it, it's a group, not a page. So it's incredibly interactive. It's one of the very different ways. We let members put, up, put messages on there and everything. Um, so go and have a look. Everybody go and have a look at that as well. There's also the website, which um, I'm very slowly helping Simon to get the- I post, to get uh, Yeah, and I posted the link to the website, which has the contact details and Glyn's put his details in there. And uh, you can also get all of the contact details for the, the Citizen Network, uh, which is kind of the network behind the scenes uh, here. So I'll put that link here as well. So do, yeah, just re when the time is right, Debs, reach out to any of us. We'll connect you in. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you ever so much. PFG like page on Facebook. If you use Facebook instantly, you come off here and you'll be able to see us all and what we're about. Glyn's always on there. <laughs> so you'll see Glyn. <laughs> so any, anybody else that was lovely? Anybody else got a question or a thought or just want to say something? Uh, Chris from, yeah, Chris. Oh, I think Me? I... I uh, just like to say thank you to everyone. Um, I thought some of the stories were great. Uh, I'm glad I did it myself as well, and uh, glad to hear about all this. You know, taking it to the world and that taking it further because I think what we have got is special. Thanks, Chris. Andrea's got a hand up, haven't you, Andrea? Have you got your hand up? Can you unmute? Yeah. Do you want me to unmute and unmute? Yeah, I think I've done that. I'm, I'm so poor with technology, so I'm so in order that I can use it. Um, I, I just I just want to say thank you to everybody that, that you've been so honest. The stories are so powerful, what, what you've actually opened your hearts, and um, I feel honoured to be part of this. Uh, I, I really do. Um, just a couple of things. You just mentioned bumping spaces and um, some of the outdoor stuff that, I, I guess in the future we want to try and uh, refresh yeah. and, and reproduce. Yeah. So, I, you know, one of the yeah. ideals is that we're, we're trying to attract yeah. funding to um, put out bumping spaces again. So we're looking at four areas, probably two areas initially, um, if we get the funding through, fingers crossed, the bid's going in this week. Um, and as Karen said, it's, it's, it's a bit like planting places where we, we're planting the ethos of, yeah. of what, the wellness center is about but it's very much tailored to the communities and what they want mm -hmm. and i guess the second project that, that well deserves a mention is the back alley project that's been put on hold at the minute it's behind the wellness center um and it's a partnership arrangement with keep moat and various other partners so i've not got the list in front of me so you know 
apologies for any disrespect there, but it's the one that stuck out in my head. But it's a fantastic outdoor project. It's about designing the, the space at the back of the centre all the way down the alley um, and they're using it as a, as a gardening project. But it's about design, it's about the environment, it's got masses and masses of potential. So, um, and Kelly's just saying in, in the messages that the college is coming tomorrow to start and do some work. So we've, we've got loads of projects on at the moment um, that are just waiting for told Bozza to um, Boris Johnson to give us a thumbs up so we can start and meet again. So there's lots of things to get involved in. Thank you. Andrea. I think Graham and, and B have their hands up. So Graham, maybe I think it's first. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I um, actually my little bit forgot to mention that I've also got anxiety. So I did forget to I did forget to mention that, but well I also want to say thank you everybody. Thank you especially to Karen for contacting me a few days ago and asking me to come and be part of it. Yeah? Um just thank you. I just thank you for all the stories because yeah, that's what the PFG is about. It's yeah. I am so looking forward to seeing once lockdown is gone and everything, getting back to the centre, seeing what's seeing what's happening, seeing all the exciting projects, and just getting involved with with it again. Thank you, G. So that's me. B. But and I I got I got to go because and um, the doctor's going to be making his rounds um, oh. in a few minutes. So. I'm just saying bye all and it, it's bye, been Darren, great. Take care and, and let us know how you're getting yeah, on, all right. I will do, and it's been great listening to everyone's stories and okay, that. Bye, Dazzler. Okay, bye. Hey, so um <clears throat> I've just been thinking after I've been speaking and listening to everybody else, and something come to my head, which was a defining moment in my life and it was all through PFG. Um, most of you will know I'm a qualified adult teacher and through PFG I'm delivering training to people. I said to Kelly, do I need to give a warning at the beginning of the training anyone joining that I have diagnosed with Tourette's and I may tick things that could be racist, homophobic, transphobic or whatever. I am not racist or transphobic. I am trans myself, so I can't be transphobic, but I'm not racist. I'm not homophobic, but they do come out and I have no control over it and I feel terrible for it. And her words back to me were, why should you apologise for a disability? Why should you apologise? Never say sorry. It is what it is. People don't need a warning for you being you. And that stuck with me, not just through work and PFG, but it stuck with me through life. And that's what changed me as a per person, the way I the way I deal with things. Trump's a fucking what's it? <laughs> Sorry. Um so the it changes the way I deal with my life professionally and personally. Just one person, and it didn't have to be Kelly. I mean, Kelly does what happens to be the person, but it could have been anyone that said that. And I don't think there's many places that do that. When I visit the Tourette's clinic professionally, they admit to me, my neurologist admitted to me, he is useless. He can give me meds, which won't work. He can give me my diagnosis, but he can't help me any more than that. So if the professionals can't help, who can? Well, PFG can help, and they've helped me. Thank you, B. Right then, I've got Glyn who wants to speak and Grace and then we'll go to Chrissy's song if that's okay. And then we will finish bang on time, I hope. <laughs> so, well, within a very few minutes of it, we'll have done it properly. So Glyn first. I just also want to uh, celebrate our partnerships at PFG have. Our partnerships with other organisations that we work with day in, day out. Again, like Simon with Centre World Centre for Welfare Reform, absolutely brilliant, bringing us here today, bringing us together today. But also places like Edlington Ultop that we work with, uh, Green's Phoenix Head for all domestic violence, Staying for, for All, uh, R Dash CCG, the council, uh, and there's lots, lots of uh, Doncaster Rovers, Doncaster Knights Rugby Club. Lots of organisations that are affiliated with PFG 
or makes this magic happen, or, or believe in community, or believe in the power of community, and, and believe in the ethos of peer support. I just wanted to celebrate that as part of what we've achieved today. Thank you. Thank you, Glyn. Grace, you're the last. You're the last one we've got time for. And Chris, you're next. I'm just telling you so you've got some time to to get yourself ready. Okay. Thank you, Grace. Um, I'd just like to say um, how that inspirational everyone is for uh, like you can come on and tell your story and then um, and I personally know that it takes a lot of guts and a lot of uh, um, a lot of effort to to speak to uh, like so many people even just speaking to one person about it and I can understand uh, everyone's story and everyone has their own unique story and I think I think that that's really inspirational everyone's story and it's just the fact that you have so much courage to come out and tell people uh, about your life and your stories it's uh, I find that really great thank you Grace thank you and I love your background as well it's amazing <laughs> so okay all right then Chris it's your turn to this I'll just tell you a little bit about the background to this song um, we're closely linked in with helping to lead on the transformation of mental health services in Doncaster which 10 years ago I don't know if they'd have even asked us to be honest with you it goes about our journey um, but um, we and we've led uh, the, the first little bit of work that we did was around um, we did a competition where you could say what you wanted mental health services to look like what you felt about them we had poetry entries we had um letters we had dances um, and chris did this song and he won and now this is the anthem to the changing of um of mental health services in doncaster which i think is amazing and we've all not had a lot of live music lately have we so it's lovely to hear it as well live so there you go chris off you go Thanks, Karen. Well done. Um, it's only acoustic, so it shouldn't blow your socks off. Just wait for 
Allah.